Here we have a Steam Deck that came in for repair. This one is the 512 gig console. And let's read what the customer wrote. Steam Deck stopped powering on and charging, opened and found chip on back of the main board was burnt. That's all what the customer wrote. The customer mailed over the console taken apart and we had a direct access to that main board. And the customer also mailed over a bag that contains the chips. I see two chips here. Looking at the board with my naked eye, and let's assume the customer did not write anything on his ticket. He did not describe what the problem is. I can tell that we have a burned spot right on that piece of paper, right here. So there must be something burning under that piece of paper, or something got hot to a point where it burned that paper. We do not see any burn marks anywhere here, but we do see a burn mark right over here. I do not know if you can tell. You see how that part is bulging out this part right here and if we take out the paper we see that chip the customer is talking about right here let's take a look at the chip and see if the chip looks burned and based on first impression it's hard to tell but if we tilt the board we can tell the chip is burned I do not know how the customer was able to tell that that chip was burned because it's very hard to tell with the naked eye. Under the microscope, if we tilt the board, we can tell. But if I look at the chip, I do see a brown spot, a slight brown spot, but very hard to tell because the glue from that piece of paper, the residue of glue could be on the chip and it's really hard to tell if that chip is burned or not. But under the microscope, we are able to tell that the chip is burned. Now that's a BGA chip and soldering or replacing a BGA chip is definitely not for beginners. Let's start by removing the chip. And after we remove the chip, we have to clean the pads and then we can solder another chip. The chip has a lot of solder balls under it. And when soldering a new chip, we cannot press down on the chip because that will temper with the solder balls under the chip. It's a good thing I noticed the batteries on my microphone went dead. All right, let's go back to working on the board. So what I did here was apply Flux, original Amtec Flux. We are a distributor of the Flux. If you're a hobbyist or in the same type of business, you can buy that Flux off our site. Just log in to northwishfix.com, click on shop, and you can buy the Flux along with the Braidwick, tweezers, soldering station, hot air station, thermal camera, power supply, voltage injection tool, whatever we use on the bench here, we carry and sell in our shop. Log in, add whatever you want to cart, check out, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. All the products that we sell are tested, and it's really not rocket science. Just buy and we ship to you. Right now what I want to do is clean the solder balls that we have on the pads. Replacing a BGA chip is not for beginners. It takes a lot of practice. What we have to do is we have to clean all the solder balls of the pads and then solder a new chip. The new chip is already rebolt, already has the solder balls on it and all the solder balls must be even. There's a process called reballing where you do your own reballing of the chip. You add the solder balls onto the chip. But why do that when you can buy the chip already rebolt? The customer already supplied us with the chip and we're going to be using that as a replacement. The chip that we took out is burnt, so you can no longer use that chip. Fume extractor on. And you see how we see all the reflections from the light, from the ring light? We see reflections of flux here, reflections of flux here, so we cannot tell what's going on under the flux because of the reflections. But no need to fear because we have the anti-glare light. Reflections are gone. 
If you do not know what the antiglar light is, you can check out the video we did on the antiglar light. Just search Northridge Fix antiglar light. We also carry and sell this in our shop. Right now, what I want to do is apply leaded solder over unleaded. So we can lower the melting temperature of those solder balls. And by doing so, we make the wicking process a lot easier. And when I say the wicking process, wick the solder braid, the one I have here, and my soldering iron. Nice and gentle. Just make sure that we got that part on the bottom. And we're done. We're not fully done, but we're done with the cleaning part. And look at how easy it is to clean this Antec flux. Now we're going to apply a tiny bit of flux. Grab a replacement chip. The one the customer mailed over. The customer is smart. I do not have those chips in stock. And if the customer did not mail those chips in, I would have to order the chips. And it will just cost more time. And for this chip, we're going to use one specific tweezer that I like because of the wide opening. Look at this one. Because if you look at this tweezer, it's not open wide enough. If you look at the Hakko tweezer, it's not open wide enough. If you look at the Aram tweezer, just barely. But this tweezer from Best, the reason I love it is look at the way it opens. You can look up this tweezer on our site. It's shaped like this, and it's from Best. Okay, so I'm going to hold that chip in place. Just like that. We're going to apply hot air. Hold it for like 7, 10 seconds. Let go. And the chip made a connection. And right now we're going to reflow. And when I say reflow, it means we're going to apply hot air over the chip until we see that chip settle in place. It's going to shift and move and settle in place. We're going to tap it once when we see that chip shift. Right there. The chip just shifted. So we're going to tap it. And you see when we tap it, how it pulls back? That tells us that the chip is soldered on perfectly. We're done. Let's wait for the board to cool down a bit. We're going to clean up and then I'll hand the board over to Big Boss to reassemble and test. And we're going to remove this. I covered the reader here so we do not burn the plastic. Now we can clean up and hope for the best. You see why doctors tell you to avoid ear swabs? Because look at the fibers that are left over when you try to clean your ears, especially if you go deep. That's your health lesson of the day. Usually ears are self-cleaning. If you have to go in and clean, just wet that ear swab. I do it every once in a while. Just wet the ear swab because if the ear swab is wet, it's not going to leave behind those fibers. 
or less likely to live around those fibers. What more do you want? I'm your tech and your doctor. I'm going to hand this over to Big Boss to assemble and test, and I'll be back. Big Boss just finished reassembling the console, and he said that no image is showing up on the screen. We do see a backlight, but we do not see an image. However, we connected the console to an external monitor, and we do see an image on an external monitor. So that tells me that we have a problem with the LCD. Most likely, we have a problem with the LCD. I asked Big Boss to remove the motherboard so I can inspect it again to see if there's anything obvious with the display circuit, and I did not see anything obvious. So right now, we're going to rule this as an LCD issue. I do not have another LCD to try on this console, but since we have an image on an external monitor, it's very likely that we have a problem with the LCD. So the console is working. It's taking a charge. It's powering on. Can you plug the charging cable? Right now we have the USB-C to HDMI adapter and that's how we were able to see it on the monitor. And it's currently charging at 12 volts, 0 0.6 amps. Okay, so it's taken a charge. And like I said, we do see a backlight on the screen, but no image. And if you plug this one back in. we see an image on the screen. We see an image on the screen. And if we, if we click, click, it's working. It's functioning and it's working. If this is a known issue with the Steam Deck or there's anything else that we need to do to see an image on the screen, let me know. Maybe I missed something. Right as of now, we are not getting an image on the Steam Deck console itself, but we are getting an image on an external monitor. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video. Thank you, Big Boss. You're welcome.